Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. This week, we know we're still in the book of Exodus, and uh, people are now out of Mitzrayim. They came out, and now they've, they're, they're on the way to the mountain and uh, back to meet with Yahweh and to hear His voice. And that's some things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about hearing the voice of Yahweh. I mean, when we pray, how many of us have, have ever prayed, I just want to hear your voice? You know, I, I want you to speak to me. I, I, I need to hear your voice. You know, we, we think about things like we need guidance. We need counsel. We need uh, understanding of some things sometimes in our lives. You know, we may not understand some things that we're going through. or We just have questions and uh, we have struggles. And, and so in, in desperation, we may have just cried. I, I, I need to hear your voice. I just need to hear from you. And um, how do we do that? <laughs> how do we do that further uh, this is how it was done you know individually privately you know we we need to hear his voice but then as a nation as a whole who needed to hear the voice of the one who redeemed them how was that going to happen you know today we say you know we pray we we read the scriptures we read the word uh, we, we, it's like, okay, we hear his voice. It's just that feeling inside of us, kind of this push or this nudge on which direction to, to bring to an answer to a question or wisdom, or we may seek counsel through other people who have spent time and study and prayer people who have some wisdom beyond us. Right. And we, we seek good counsel, good advice, and all of that's great. And, uh, but here Israel needs to hear the voice of Yahweh for themselves. And what's going to happen when they do that? Uh, we know, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> we read ahead and find out that uh, the people backed off when they heard the voice of Yahweh. It's kind of like, no, we need to hear his voice for ourselves, Moses. And then Yahweh speaks to them and like, Moses, we can't stand to do this. If we hear the voice of God, we're going to die. You go find out what, what Yahweh says, and then you relay it to us, and that way we can ignore you. No, 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 that's not what they said. Uh, it's, it says, you know, you go find out what Yahweh says. And, uh, and then until so that we can do that. Okay. So it had to be written down. It had to be uh, instruction that was given for us, but there's, there's a lot to see here because this is not just one person in prayer, you know, like Moshe with Yahweh. Um, this is an entire nation of people, an entire people of Israel coming there to hear the voice of Yahweh. Now, the thing is to hear his voice, there has to be a preparation. Consider that there has to be a preparation. At the very least, you want to have your heart to, to be inclined to Yahweh's. You want to set your heart and your mind toward him to hear his voice. Granted, if you, you can't say, uh, Yahweh, I want to hear your voice and then go do everything else that distracts you from that. Okay, so there has to be this time of preparation. And also, as you go through, you read through the scripture, you find out uh, Moshe had a different lifestyle than the Levites. And had a different lifestyle than even his brother, who was the high priest. He had a different lifestyle than uh, just anyone among any of the other tribes of Israel. So he, there, there's, there's a responsibility uh, to the, the presence of Yahweh. And you can say, okay, but this is like at the mountain or when the tabernacle was built, this was the closer to the tabernacle. But consider the weight of that. Consider if this is the same presence that was on Mount Sinai, the same presence that was in the tabernacle, the same presence that was in Yeshua, the same presence that raised him from the dead lives in you. That is a responsibility. Okay, that puts some things on us that we have to pay attention to our lifestyle and, and the things that we uh, allow in our life. Uh, are they distractions or are they helping? And I'm not saying you can't do absolutely anything unless it's spiritual. I'm just saying that are, there are things that we can allow in our life that can distract us from what we really should be doing right now or paying attention to, you know, times and places, discernment and all things, right? So uh, how, do, how do we do this? How do we learn to hear his voice? How did Israel coming together? How did they prepare to hear the voice of Yahweh? Well, let's go back and look at the story. Exodus 19, uh, verses 3 through 11, you're going to look at this, but I'm going to go to verse 9. So Yahweh says to Moshe, Lo, I come unto you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. See that? Not just believe me, but believe you forever. We'll come back to that. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh says to Moses, So go to the people and sanctify them. Go to the people and do what? 
sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, uh, Yahweh will come down in the sight of the people of all, of all the people on Mount Sinai. So again, um, there, is, there is some things that needed to happen. Uh, the idea here is, is preparing their hearts. And re remember the issues of clean, unclean, holy, and common, right? They didn't want to bring something unclean in the presence of Yahweh. They didn't want to bring something profane in the presence of Yahweh. So there's some precautions that they had to take in the midst of that. And further, if we go to verse 12, we find you are to set limits or boundaries for the people all around and say, be careful not to go up to the mountain or even touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. Understand these boundaries were put there for the protection of the people and your inheritance, the things that were about to be done. The people were to be careful that they do not approach Yahweh on their terms or in their timing. And there was also a mixed multitude of people in there. Now, the thing is, we know that in, in, in the past, we've talked about boundaries. Uh, boundaries in and of themselves are not bad. Boundaries can protect you. Kind of like if there's high voltage wiring uh, that, that's, in, that's in an area, they put up a fence so you don't get too close to that, so you don't die of electrocution, okay? Something very similar. So he said, put boundaries around the mountain so that you don't try to come to me on your terms in your time. Uh, set boundaries so that at the right time in the preparation of things, you can come forward. Now, the problem is sometimes we set boundaries outside the boundaries that God has given. You know, kind of like uh, don't eat from that tree. And it ended up being, oh, don't eat from that tree. Don't even touch it. Don't even look at it. Don't turn away from it. Run the other direction kind of thing. You know, we add things to the boundaries that Yahweh has given. And then the next generation or whoever's around will perceive this is what God has said, but this is not what Yahweh has said. It's the boundaries that we established has, has done. So got to be careful with that too. Okay. Boundaries are there for your safety. They're there for your protection. It's not an oppression for you. It's a blessing to work inside the boundaries that Yahweh has given to us, but we have to be careful not to set excessive boundaries on what Yahweh has given for us, because then we could be missing out on a blessing of some things that he, he said he wants, you know? So again, we don't want to remove the joy of serving him by setting oppressive boundaries, but at the same time, Understand there are boundaries and there are things that are given to us so that we can flourish within them. Uh, look at this. Psalm 94, 12 says, how happy the man whom you correct, Yah, whom you teach from your Torah. Psalm 119, 1 says, how happy are those whose way of life is blameless, who live by the Torah of Adonai. Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a prophetic vision, the people throw off all restraint, but he who keeps Torah is happy. James 2.12 says, speak and act like a people who are going to be judged by a Torah of liberty. See that? So understand, when there's something in the scripture that's declared as holy, there are boundaries around that to set the parameters, to keep the thing that is holy, holy. You do not want to profane the holy things. There is a space between the holy and the common so that we don't encroach upon the holy things. You know, understand, not just anyone could go into the most holy place, you know, any time of the year, right? No, only Aaron could go into the most holy place in only one day, Yom HaKippurim, right? So again, there are, there are boundaries that are set there. And a boundary is not just uh, like a physical fence, okay? A boundary can be a holy place, like the sanctuary. It can be something that is there physical. It can be holy time, like Shabbat. Shabbat has boundaries, right? The sundown of, of the day before, you know, sundown on, on, on Friday as the sun is going down. We are now setting a boundary for the next day for Shabbat, and it's over the next day at sundown, right? So again, the holy time, Shabbat, the Moedim, the Moedim, holy times, and then holy people. Holy people is Israel. The people of Israel, there are boundaries that are set around these things, okay? So we need to acknowledge that place within that. We don't want to profane the holy things. We want to keep the holy things holy, so we must observe the boundaries so that we can do what he's asking, so that we can prepare ourselves and our hearts to hear his voice, okay? So again, this is uh, learning to work together at that. So before they can even start to prepare a place for Yahweh to, to dwell, they have to first prepare themselves. Okay, now how do they do this? They first have to get themselves ready, get their heart ready, get their mindsets ready. Yahweh brought them out of Mitzrayim and he brought them to this place. And uh, he brought them to this place to reaffirm covenant with them. 
to say, I, I delivered you. I redeemed you. You are my people. I am your God. Will you keep and uphold this covenant that I have with you that I, was given to your father, Abraham Yitzhak Yaakov? And uh, so as they enter into this, he gives them the terms of the covenant. The terms of the covenant are the boundaries that are given in covenant. Understand, in covenant, covenant is not, so I enter into covenant with somebody and now I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, with no regard or concern for the other person. See, that's not covenant. Covenant is learning to walk together within the boundaries that are set on that covenant. Okay, just like a marriage. Right? The two become one and they learn to walk together in the boundaries of that covenant. Okay? They, they belong to one another. They don't belong to anyone else in the world. So our covenant with Yahweh, very similar. We belong to him. Therefore, we walk in the parameters of his covenant. Now, that's even the thing. When Yahweh broke the silence of heaven, spoke into earth, and he, what did he speak? You know, the, the 10 words, the, the 10 commandments, we call them, right? But the, the 10 words. What was the very first one? You know, the, and again, the reckoning of how they do this varies from a uh, translation to translation, but the very first commandment was relationship is, is a relationship commanded. Here's the thing, guys, if we don't have that covenant relationship with Yahweh, then the word that he gives us is irrelevant to us. It makes no sense to us. It's foolishness to the world. It's uh, we don't want to do it. We won't do it. And we're not going to walk in his ways. But if we are in relationship and in covenant with him, that's why the very first thing he says is, I am the Lord, your God. I am Yahweh, your God. See, if it's a very first commandment is about relationship. And if we approach the, his word like that, then that's going to change our lives. And it's going to, to going to have an effect on how we live again. The very first thing he spoke was, I am Anohi, I am Yodhe Vavhe Elohecha, your Elohim. Okay? So who were these words given to? They were given to all who were redeemed. So what's the prerequisite for the the word of Yahweh? Redemption. You can't say this is the Torah that Yahweh has given us and that we should all walk in if you're not redeemed, if you're not part of his people. If you're not part of his people, then keeping the Torah is not going to make you part of his people. Right? Didn't Rav Shaul say that? You know, he, and he said circumcision or, or uncircumcision doesn't matter. What matters is the heart. In other words, are we going to have covenant with Yahweh? Not just a physical sign of something that we profess, but are we actually going to put his words, put, put his words in our heart and walk in his ways? Do we actually have relationship? Okay. So that's what we're looking at. If he redeemed us, then we are learning to walk in his ways. Now in that, we, well, let, let's stop for a minute and look at the other side of this. We want to hear his voice, but understand there is danger in hearing the voice of Yahweh. Now, understand how some of these people felt, okay? When, when Yahweh spoke and it, it shook the heavens and the earth and the mountain and the smoke and the shofar and the fire and the flames and the flashes and the torches and all this, and it was too much for the people. Sensory overload, right? They couldn't handle it. They're like, if God continues to speak to us, we're going to die. We can't handle this. Okay. So th they recognize something within that, but understand, you know, later kind of comes up, Hey, we all heard the voice of God, you know, think Korah. Okay. We all heard from God. God speaks to us too, you know? Uh, so, so consider there's another side of this. There's one in reverence and humility and just being honest, right? And then there's another uh, pride and arrogance and, and all this coming up in here. There's a few things to look at. Let's, let's take a quick look at that. So again, the people need to prepare because Yahweh is going to speak directly to them and people have to be careful in preparing to meet with or hearing from Yahweh. If we hear the voice of Yahweh, we might think we are accountable only to him. This is called prophet syndrome. A person who believes they hear from God and thereby are exempted from submission to authority, even when authority is God ordained. In other words, hey, I hear from God too, so I don't need to listen to anybody else. I have no accountability to anyone else. I have no responsibility to anyone else, and I have no care in the world for anyone except for God, except for Yahweh. See, and I hear from Yahweh, so therefore I don't have to listen to anyone, anyone else in this world. Now, here's the thing. If you live in the world, you understand there are rules. There are laws, uh, depending on what country you live in, they vary, okay? But even so, Yahweh gave us the means to be accountable to one another. 
Uh, he put us within a body of people, even the prophets he had within the body of Israel, right, that could look and could see what they were saying, and there were judges among that as well. Uh, not to mention there are also tests for prophets that are in the scripture, you know, Deuteronomy 13, right? I mean, this was a big deal. You can't just say, oh, hear the voice of Yahweh, therefore I'm a prophet. Uh, Yahweh could speak to anyone whom he desires to. He spoke to a donkey. OK, <laughs> the donkey, you know, Balaam's donkey, he, he looked and he saw uh, something Balaam didn't. Right. Uh, so, again, Yahweh could speak to whoever he wants to, however he wants to, whatever. But just because we have an event in our life does not necessarily make you a prophet. OK, it just means you heard the voice of Yah, which is good. It's a blessing. But be careful that because you've heard something from Yahweh, you don't elevate yourself up into a place of pride where you refuse to listen to anybody else. We need to remain humble, we need to remain teachable, and we need to, to understand that uh, we don't have all the answers, okay? Uh, and again, even look at the relationship of, of, of Israel as whole, you know, even Moshe messed up at times, right? We definitely see that. That's why he wasn't allowed to enter into the land, okay? So again, that's what we look at now. So, so one is, I answer only to God. Only God can judge me. You know, you've heard that. The thing is, that should scare you, <laughs> okay? But it doesn't because of pride or arrogance and, and whatever else comes in there. Now, the other side of that is I, I answer only to Moses. It's not just I answer to Yahweh, but I answer only to Moses, okay? Because Moses is the only person who spoke directly to Yahweh, so no one else compares to the revelation he had. So therefore, to follow the thinking, even the rest of the Tanakh is flawed, and, then, and, and by saying I answer only to Moses, only to the first five books of the Torah, I really am saying I answer only to my own interpretations of the Torah. And uh, that's not good for us either, because we are supposed to work together with the Torah and the word that we were given and the leaders appointed to keep the authority of the word so that we can walk in the authority of the word. Right? You know, think of the, think of the, 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 the soldier who came to Yeshua, and it's like, all you have to do is speak the word and... And I know that it will happen because I'm a man under authority. I recognize that with you. I know how this works. All you have to do is speak the word. It's going to be done. Right. And he said he was a man of great faith. So again, we have to learn to work together in the authority that Yahweh has given us. Granted his word, his Ruach HaKodesh, uh, Yeshua, right. But also people that he's put us together with to learn to have counsel uh, in, in that too. Okay. So uh, now next question was the word of Yahweh to the Jews only. Because many people today think a Jew is obligated to keep the Torah, but a non-Jew, well, they could look at it and they could decide to do it or not. My, my question with this is, once someone has been brought near, are they still considered a stranger and a foreigner? Or once someone is brought near to Yahweh, brought near to covenant, are they now considered a place among the people of Israel? Right? Grafted in, grafted into what? means you're no longer part of the nations. You are now part of one people, a people redeemed and set apart to Yahweh. Uh, Ephesians 2 says that you used to be far off. You used to be strangers to the covenant of promise. You were without hope. You were, you were apart from the commonwealth of Israel. But in the Messiah Yeshua, you who were far off are now brought near to these things. So you are brought near to be a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Not replacing, by no means. But we are coming in to join with, to be a part with his people. Okay. So the voice of Yahweh to hear his voice. What are some of the things that they, uh, that they saw in this? Well, one is with thunders. You know, we saw this, the thunder, the lightning, the smoke, the, the shaking, right? Thunder shakes everything, right? And so all this is, is part of hearing his voice, but that's not the only way. But let's take a look at this. The thunders in Exodus 19, 16. It says, it came to pass on the third day in the morning, there were thunders, lightnings, and a thick cloud on the mountain, and the voice of the shofar exceeding loud and strong, and the people that was in the camp trembled. Now, the word for thunders is kolot, it's voices, right? The voices, the thunders, the voices that are so loud and long and deep that it shook the earth. The lightnings uh, is uh, brachim. Where they're like lightnings, flashes, like gleaming swords, all this, and, 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 and a thick cloud, all this in there, right? In Job, what do we read? Job 37, 1 through 5, says, At this also my heart trembles and leaps out of its place. Keep listening to the thunder of his voice. See that? The thunder of his voice and the rumbling that comes from his mouth. Under the whole heaven he lets it go. 
Um, I lost my place. Under the whole heaven, he lets it go and is lightning to the corners of the earth. After it, his voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain the lightnings when his voice is heard. God thunders wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. See that? The, the thunder, his voice thunders and the thundering and, and all that. Wow, it's, a, it's an awe thing, right? But Psalms even says that the voice of Adonai hews out flames of fire. So there's thunder and fire and lightnings and all this. It's an amazing thing. But we also see the still small voice, the whisper, don't we? You know, First Kings nineteen, Eliyahu says uh, he's 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 he runs away right after the he he has this confrontation with the prophets of Baal, and uh, Jezebel says she's going to kill him, and he runs off. And he goes to the mountain, and then he, he a voice comes to him and says, uh, Eliyahu, what's going on? Right, and so he tells him to go stand by the entrance to the cave, and what happens? So go stand on the mount before Yahweh, and behold, Yahweh passed by. And a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke it in pieces and the rocks before Yahweh, but Yahweh was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but Yahweh was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And Eliyahu heard it, and he wrapped his face in the cloak, and he went out, and he stood at the entrance of the cave, and behold, there came a voice, and he says, what are you doing here, Eliyahu? Not getting into all that right now, but how did he hear the voice of Yahweh? In the small, still voice, and, 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 and even it says a whisper. So how did all this happen? Again, he has to tune in. You know, all these other things, this amazing show of the, of, of the spirit of Yah moving and all this. But when his voice spoke to him, it was in this still small voice. All these other things can be considered distractions if we're not careful. So we've got to pay attention to these things. First Samuel 3, 4 through 10. Another good example. Uh, Yahweh called Shmuel, the prophet Shmuel, when he was a young child. And he says, here I am. And he ran to Eli. Why did he go to Eli? You know, El Eli's Eli, right? Why did he go to him? Because he heard someone calling him, and he didn't know that it was Yahweh. So he, obviously, who, who was raising him? Well, Eli was. So he went to run, run to him, right? So this is what happens. So he says, here I am, for you called me. But he says, I didn't call. Go lie down again. So he went to lay down. And Yahweh called again, Shmuel. And, and Shmuel rose and went to Eli and says, here I am, for you called me. He says, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now, Shmuel did not yet know Yahweh, and the word of Yahweh had not yet been revealed to him. That's, that's a lot to get into. We won't even co consider that for the moment. But look at this, what's happening. Okay, he's, he's hearing the voice. He's running to Eli, and he's like, you called me. He's like, I didn't call you. Go lay down. He comes back and wakes him up again. You called me. I didn't call you. Go lay down, right? And, and imagine this keeps happening and frustrating and all that's going on, right? Well, finally, they, they get an idea of what's going on. Let's look at it. Verse 8. So Yahweh called Shmuel again the third time, and he arose with Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that Yahweh was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli says to Shmuel, Go lie down, and if, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Yahweh, for your servant hears. So Shmuel went to lay down in his place, and Yahweh came, and he stood. Let's check that out. Yahweh came and stood, calling as at other times, Shmuel, Shmuel, and Shmuel said, speak for your servant here. So again, hearing his voice, he heard his voice, literally, and he, but he couldn't distinguish whose the voice that was. Got to be careful of that too. See, because there's a lot of voices out there that are, that, that are more than willing to, to tell you what you should be doing, but it might not be the right voice. That's why discernment is is needed. He had to discern the voice that was being heard. Isaiah 30, 21 says, your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And when you turn to the right or turn to the left, John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth and he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will tell you and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So we have the, the, the word, the, the thundering, we have the still small voice. We also have the word that's written for you. You can't forsake that. I mean, that's the most obvious thing, you know, so many, I, I've ran into so many people today. They're just saying, I just need a word from the Lord, but they won't open their Bible to read it at all. Okay. Uh, that, that's a problem. Okay. Uh, open your Bible, read it and, and pray. This is the very first thing that we need to prepare ourselves to hear from him.
Okay, so when we go back and we read the word, we read from Moshe, but how long do the words of Moses stand? Did the words of Moshe only stand until Yeshua came? No, no. See, the word of Yahweh is uh, from the beginning to the end. It's, it's not uh, done away with. It's, it's, it, it didn't change even. What came is our method of receiving it. That which was written on the page can now live within us. Okay, let's look at this. Exodus 19, 8 and 9. So all the people answered together and he said, All that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words to, the, to Yahweh. And Yahweh says to Moses, Lo, I come and speak to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with whom? You. And believe you forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahweh. So Moshe was a model for a mediator. Now, not to be a mediator for all time, but he was a model for a mediator. He went between Yahweh and the people up to the point when they said, okay, yes, we receive it. We do it till the point when they made this confirmation that yes, they're going to hear the words of Yahweh and yes, they're going to keep it. Yes, they're going to do it. And then at this point, Yahweh spoke and all Israel heard it. See that he was kind of the mediator bringing them to Yahweh. And then once they made this commitment, Yahweh spoke to all of them together. All right. And uh, instead of pushing in, uh, they, they backed off. But again, we see he was a model for a mediator. Deuteronomy 5, 4 and 5 says that uh, Yahweh talked with you face to face in the mountain in the midst of the fire. And I stood between Yahweh and you at that time to show you the word of Yahweh. For you were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount. So again, these are the, this is the idea. He was a picture for a mediator, uh, kind of like Yeshua is a mediator to bring us into the presence of the Most High, right? To bring us into his presence. And uh, again, this is how we come. It's a profession of faith, a profession of, yes, you are my Elohim. You are the one that I serve. You are the one true God. You are the creator of all things, right? And again, uh, when that happens, does that change the word from the beginning? No, because at the very beginning he created and, and he was Yahweh in the very beginning and he still is, right? So do Moshe and Yeshua contradict? No, they do not. Matter of fact, Yeshua says kind of the opposite. Uh, in Matthew 5, he says, don't think I've come to do away with the Torah of the prophets, right? Uh, and then and in John 5, he says, for, have, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how will you believe my words? He's saying, if you really believe what Moses wrote, you would believe me. But on the other side of that, that's just as true. How can we say that we believe what Yeshua says if we do not believe what Moses wrote? Because he says what Moses wrote, wrote of Yeshua. So if we say, nope, I only listen to Yeshua, then we're discounting what Yahweh's given to us because Yeshua said that Moses wrote of him. As a matter of fact, when Yeshua was quoting scripture to the people, where did he quote from? When he was telling them, talking to them and living to them about life and instruction and righteousness in the word, where did he give them the word from? Okay, so all of this is in there together. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's Moses, the prophets, the writings, the words of Yeshua, all together is uh, the word that's been given to us, right? Malachi 2.7 says that a Kohen's lips should safeguard knowledge and people should seek Torah from his mouth because he is the messenger of Adonai Tzavahot. See that? He should safeguard knowledge, but when the people come to him, they should be seeking Torah from him. The instruction of Yahweh, not his, not his opinion, not, his, not just what he's thinking. They should be hearing and receiving instruction from Yahweh himself. The words of the living God, they should be seeking Torah from him. Isaiah 8, 20 says to the law and the testimony, literally the Torah from to the Torah and to, Uda, to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them to the Torah and the testimony. The testimony most often refers to uh, the tablets of testimony, you know, the things from this week's Torah portion, right? Uh, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28 says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Not just to hear it, but hear it and obey it, to hear it and do it. Okay, so we have the thunders and the lightnings. We have the still small voice. We've got the word that's written and don't, don't forsake this. The word came alive. And if the word came alive, how do you think it can dwell in you? It didn't change. It came alive. 
and now is living in you. Look at 1 John 2, 3 through 6. So now we know that we have come to know him by this, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God is truly made perfect. We know that we are in him by this. Whoever lays cl- lay, whoever claims to abide in him must walk just as he walked. How did Yeshua walk in this in this world? How did he live in this earth? He never once violated the Torah of Yahweh. That means he kept it. Because in order to violate the Torah, you simply just don't do it. You have to in- intentionally walk it. You have to intentionally set out to do it. Otherwise, you're violating it. See that? It's not just happenstance. So Yeshua walked in the word of the living God. He was the word made flesh. Why would he violate uh, and and make himself into that position of being profane? See that? We're given the word so that we can do it, not just speculate that's for somebody else. Matter of fact, uh, quoting from Romans uh, well, no, let me go back a little further. Romans quotes Deuteronomy. In verse uh, chapter 30, verse 14, it says that the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart to do it. Solomon said this, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Everything in our life comes down to this. Fear God, keep his commandments. That's what we've been put here to do. What about Yeshua? Yeshua says, John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commands. 14, 21, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. John 15, 10 says, if you keep my commands, you will stay in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and stay in his love. See that? So Yeshua is not asking us to do anything he didn't do. So matter of fact, he says, uh, if you believe in me, then, then the things that I do, you'll do greater works than these. That's the thing, guys. If we are following him, we will be walking in the word of the living God. Yeshua says that, right? We just read it. And as we do that, we're going to grow in that walking in his word by his Ruach, equipped by his presence in order to live the way that he desires for us to live, to be a blessing, not just to him, but to those around us as well, to help make a change and an impact in this world. Wow. That's why we've been given the word. That's why we've been given the promises. That's why he calls the people set apart to uh, uh, bring a restoration uh, that, that he's been waiting for since the beginning. Okay, guys, so this is uh, all I've got for you today. There's so many other places that we can get into here this time, but we don't have the time in this teaching. So uh, that's all we have for you today. Uh, I pray that this has been an encouragement to you. I pray pray that this has been a challenge and a blessing to you as well. And um, get in the Word. Continue to study it. Get it in you. Get it in your heart. Get it in your spirit so that you can walk in it, so that you can live it. And so that it's a blessing to you and those around you. Let's just live our life blessed, being a blessing to our Father, right? Being a blessing to Yahweh, okay? So uh, until next time, I, I pray this has been a blessing to you. And uh, please share these videos in whatever format you watch, whatever social media that you tend to uh, come across these. Uh, like them, share them, subscribe, whatever you need to do in the in the platform. Please help us get the word out there. And if these have been a blessing to you, would you consider making a donation to help us keep these going? Um, There are costs associated with these. uh, So if you can, please help us uh, to keep things moving along so that we can continue to get the word out there. Right. All right, guys. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, be blessed and shalom.